हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन इफ़ यू हैवन डन इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम इट सीज दैट द स्टिफ लेग डायरेक्ट यूज्ड ऑन शिप्स इज सपोर्टेड बाय बॉल एंड सॉकेट जॉइन एट डी एंड टू केबल्स बी ए एंड बी सी द केबल्स आर अटैच टू अ स्मूथ कॉलर रिंग एट बी विच अलाउज रोटेशन ऑफ द डायरेक्ट अबाउट दीज एड एक्सिस इफ द डायरेक्ट सपोर्ट्स a uh, crate having mass of 200 kg determine the tension in the cables and the x y z components of the reaction at d so here at d we have the ball and socket joint so we will have a x reaction we will have a y reaction and we will have a z reaction and here in both of these ropes we will have the tension so we are required to find <laughs> the tension in this pa cable and the tension in that bc cable and we have to find a x a y uh, uh, sorry b, this is d x d y and d z so let's represent all those uh, support reactions so here we will have d x we will have d y and we will have d z in the upward direction and let's say if i cut these ropes if we cut these ropes somewhere here so we will have we will have this is let's say t1 and let's say t2 so we are required to find the magnitude of t1 and t2 so now first of all we have to represent this t1 and t2 as cartesian vector so i can write that t1 cartesian vector this will be equal to t1 magnitude and t1 is acting from b to d so multiply by the unit vector from b to d and this is equal to t1 and the unit vector from b to d is the position vector from b to d divided by its magnitude so we can write that t1 and we can find the position vector from b to d by traveling from b along uh, the x y and z in order to reach that point a so from b we need to travel six meters in the negative z that's in the negative k so we will write minus 6k so we will reach this origin then from origin we need to travel uh, 3 meters this 3 meters in the negative j that is in the negative y so i will write minus 3j so we will reach here and then from here we need to travel 2 meters in the positive x so that is plus 2i and then this is the position vector from b to d and then we have to find its magnitude so its magnitude will be 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square under the square root now let's find this magnitude this is square root uh, 2 square plus 3 square 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square so this gives us 7 so this is approximately equal to 7 now we can divide this each magnitude by 7 and multiply by t1 so we can write that t1 cartesian vector is 2 divided by 7 i this is 2 divided by 7 t1 i then we will have minus 3 divided by 7 t1 j minus 6 divided by 7 t1 k so now from this we can say that uh, t1 have one component in the positive x that is and its magnitude is 2 divided by 7 so we will have uh, one component in the positive x then it have one component in the negative j like this and then it have one component in the negative k so this is the uh, t1 cartesian vector similarly we can find t2 as a cartesian vector then again we will have t2 and the unit vector from b to c since t2 is acting from b to c this will be t2 and this will be the position vector from b to c divided by the magnitude of the position vector from b to c this will be t2 and we again we can find the position vector from b to c by traveling from b along the x y and z axis so from b we need to travel again six meters in the negative k so I will write minus 6k and then from here we need to travel uh, this distance uh, 3 meters in the negative j so minus 3j so then we will reach this point and then from here we need to travel 6 meters in the negative i that is in the negative x so minus 6i 
so this is the position vector from b to c and then we have to find its magnitude so this will be six square plus three square plus six square under the square root so this is six square plus three square plus six square this gives us nine so now this magnitude is this magnitude is nine and again we can multiply this t2 inside and divide each component by nine so we will have t2 so that is minus six divided by nine t2 minus three divided by nine t2 j minus six divided by nine t2 k so this is the cartesian vector representation of that t1 and t2 and since we are given that this weight has a mass of 20 kg so if you multiply it by g we will have the units in newton so we will have the units of this t1 and t2 in newtons as well similarly we can represent this uh, weight as a cartesian vector the weight is going to act in the downward direction so it's so it's, oh, the weight is only acting in the z direction so it's i and j components will be zero so we can write that the weight vector is equal to 0 i plus 0 j minus the mass is 200 so 200 multiplied by 9.81 this gives us 1962 so minus 1962k so this is the uh, cartesian vector representation of the weight which is acting downward at this particular point now this problem is can be made very easy if we apply the summation of moment about this ac line so if we apply the summation of moment about ac equals to zero so in that equation we will not get the t1 and t2 t1 and t2 are passing through this line about which we want to find the moment so a t1 and t2 cannot produce the moment about this ac line since they are intersecting and the perpendicular distance or the moment arm of t1 and t2 from that ac line is zero so first of all i'm going to find the summation of the moment about ac line that will be equal to zero so this will make our life very very easier so now we can find the summation of moment about ac line uh, using the scalar approach or we can find it by using the vector approach so if i use the scalar approach let's say so we are going to use the scalar approach and according to the scalar approach the moment is always equal to f times d and d is the perpendicular distance of a force so now as we can see that this dx this is parallel to this axis so it's not going to produce the moment about that axis similarly this dy this is passing through that ac axis about which we want to find the moment so it's not going to produce the moment so only this dz is producing the moment about that ac line and it's going to produce the moment like this and if we curl our right hand finger so the thumb will point out in this direction that is in the positive x so let's say we will write that uh, plus dz and the perpendicular distance of dz from that axis is, is this three meters so this three meters is the moment arm of this dz so we will multiply this with three and similarly this weight is going to produce the moment about this axis in this direction like this and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative x direction that is in the opposite direction like this so we can write that this is minus 1962 is the weight times the perpendicular distance of the weight so the perpendicular distance of the weight is this distance plus this distance so this is 3 plus 4 so this is 7 so we will multiply this with 7 so now this is equal to 0 and from this equation we have only one unknown that dz is the only unknown so from this we can say that dz is 1962 into 7 divided by 3 so this will give us 1962 into 7 divided by 3 this is 4578 so dz is equal to 4578 newtons now if i uh, draw the axis is some reference axis is at point b let's say that we have uh, uh, y dash axis is at b let's say this is my y dash axis and let's say i have the x dash axis like this 
and the z-axis will remain the same this is our z-axis that same z-axis is so now again if i apply the summation of moment about the uh, x dash axis is if we apply the summation of moment about the x dash axis is that must be equal to zero since the system is in equilibrium now again uh, finding the summation of moment about the x dash axis is will again give us simplicity this t1 and t2 they are unknowns and they will not be a uh, that will not be visible in our equation so that will make our life easier so we will have only uh, the unknowns from these three so now if we find the summation of moment about the x dash so again this dx this is parallel to the x dash axis it's not going to produce the moment about the x dash axis and this dz this is passing through that uh, x dash axis so again it's not going to produce the moment about the x dash axis now this dy is producing the moment about the x dash axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive x dash direction so this means that this dy is producing the counterclockwise moment about the x dash axis so i will write that dy will write plus dy since it is producing the counterclockwise moment so you will write plus since the thumb is pointing out in the positive x dash direction and the perpendicular distance of this dy from this the x dash axis is, is this distance which is six meters so we will multiply this with six similarly this weight is producing the moment about the x dash axis is in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative x dash so this means that this weight is producing the clockwise moment so for clockwise we will write minus 1962 is the weight and the perpendicular distance of this weight from x dash axis is, is this four meters distance so we will multiply this weight with four so four meters is the moment arm of this weight this is equal to zero so from this we can say that dy equals to 1962 into four divided by six so 1962 multiplied by 4 divided by 6 this gives us dy equal to 1308 newtons similarly if we apply the summation of moment about the y dash axis the summation of moment about y dash axis so again uh, t1 and t2 they are intersecting with the y dash they are not going to produce the moment about the y dash axis is dy is parallel to the y dash it's not going to produce the moment about y dash and this uh, dz is intersecting with the y dash axis it's not going to produce the moment so only dx and the weight they are producing the moment about the y dash axis is since this weight is at a distance of one meters from y dash axis is so if the line of action of this weight was in case intersecting with the y axis so it, then the weight was not able to produce the moment about the y dash axis but since this weight is at some distance from this y axis and from that y dash axis so this weight can produce the moment about y and y dash axis so now uh, we can see that this dx is producing the moment about y dash axis and it can produce the moment about y dash axis in this direction like this and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive y dash direction so we will write dx and the perpendicular distance of dx from y dash axis is, is six meters so we will write plus six dx and this weight is producing the moment about the y dash axis is in this direction this is producing the moment like this and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in this direction so we can write that that is plus 1962 and the perpendicular distance of the weight the weight vector from the y dash axis is one meters since this y dash and this y axis they are parallel so this weight is at a distance of one meter from y dash axis as well so we will multiply it with one so from this we can say that dx is 1962 into 1 divided by 6.
so dx is equal to minus 327 newtons so the, the negative sign tells us that the assumed dx direction is not accurate dx is actually acting in the positive x direction right so we have assumed that dx is acting in the negative x but it is acting in the positive x so dx magnitude is 327 it is acting in the positive x direction so now let's reverse the direction of dx dx is acting in this direction and once we reverse the direction we can say that dx magnitude is plus 327 newtons now to find t1 and t2 it's very easy we can apply the summation of forces along x equals to zero so the summation of forces along x that will be equal to zero so as we know that t1 this is the x component of t1 this is acting in the positive x this is the x component of t2 it is acting in the negative x so we will write we will add up both of these so i will write 2 divided by 7 t1 plus 2 divided by 7 t1 plus plus this 6 minus 6 divided by 9 t2 minus 6 divided by 9 t2 and then we will have this dx this is acting in the positive x so you will write plus 327 this is equal to 0 now from this we can write that 2 divided by 7 t1 minus 6 divided by 9 t2 equals to minus 327 similarly if we apply the uh, summation of forces along the y-axis let me write the summation of forces along the y-axis that will be equals to 0 so again we have to add up all the y components so this is minus 3 divided by 7 t1 minus then we will have uh, minus 3 divided by 92 and then we have dy this dy is acting in the positive y direction and its magnitude is 1308 so plus 1308 this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that minus 3 divided by 7 t1 minus 3 divided by 9 t2 equals to minus 1308 now we have these two equations and we have two unknowns t1 and t2 now i want to eliminate t2 from uh, both of these equations or from one of these equations so if I multiply this whole equation with 2, so we will get 6 divided by 9 here. And then if I add this equation, if I subtract this equation from this, then we will eliminate T2. So let me multiply this equation with 2. So we will get minus 6 divided by 7 T1 minus 6 divided by 9 T2. And this is minus 2 into 1308 now let's subtract this equation from this equation number one so we can write that this is minus 6 divided by 71 minus 6 divided by 92 minus 2 into 1308 we will subtract this so this sign will become opposite now this will cancel out and we will have 2 divided by 7 plus 6 divided by 7 so this is 8 divided by 7 t1 equals to now this is minus 327 plus 2 into 1308 and from this we can say that t1 is equal to 7 into minus into 1308 divided by 8 so 7 multiplied by minus 327 plus 2 into 1308 divided by 8 this gives us t1 equals to 2002 or we can say that approximately 2003 newtons similarly now if i substitute this t1 in in this equation or if we substitute this t1 in this equation so we will get t2 so let me substitute this in this equation so now we have 2 divided by 7 t1 t1 is now known 2003 minus 6 divided by 9 t2 equals to minus 327 so now from this we can say that 
if I bring this term to the other side of the equation, it will become minus. So we will have minus 2 divided by 7 into 2003 minus 327 minus 2 divided by 7 into 2003. So this is minus 6 divided by 9. T2 equals to minus 899.29. And now minus sign will cancel out. And from this we can say that T2 is equal to 899.29 multiplied by 9 divided by 6. So 899.29 multiplied by 9 divided by 6 this gives us 1348.93 or we can say that this is 1349 so t2 is equal to 1349 newtons so now t2 is 1349 t1 is 2003 and dx is 327 dy is 1308 newtons and dz is 4578 newtons so this is the solution of this particular problem uh, by using the scalar approach. Now you people can find the same solution if you people find the summation of moment uh, about point B equals to zero using the vector approach. And then uh, you people will be able to find, you people will have all these three equations and you people will find dx, dy and dz. You people will have all these same equations. You people will have the same equation if you, if you people find the summation of moment about point B and if you people add up all the I components of that moment. Similarly, if you add up all the uh, Y components, so you people will have all, all these uh, equations and then you people will find uh, all these dx, dy and dz. And, and then at the end, if finding, applying the summation of forces along x, y, and z, that will give us t1 and t2. So let's, uh, you people must try that vector approach and then let me know in the comments uh, that whether that method is easy or this method is easy. But from my side, this is the solution of this problem and I, I hope it will help you in your learning. Do let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning and subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems from Hebelostatics.